Councils on Health. Councils on Health. Yep. What did we find out about Councils on Health? Well, it was the bio, the bio, the bio the is the council. The bio the book for Councils on Health. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it had everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to talk about. Uh, continue that conversation. That the Bible had a full package. And people have been educated away from seeing that package. And we want to draw attention back to it. And when we draw attention to it, it, it does have the same effect today as it did on the Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't like the idea that people were drawn away from their tradition. And it causes problems. And so <clears throat> Christ would have us drawn away from tradition. So I'm gonna what I want to do here to start this off. Uh, I said this is structure. This is structure. This is this is an overview of the whole Bible. It is structure in a certain way that it should grab your attention and it should hold it. It should not turn loose. Because when we make comparison with health from Eden all the way to Melchizedek, it gets attention. I was talking to a preacher yesterday on our property, and, uh, and we talked about some of these things. You know, he said, I praise God, I'm not on any medication. I'm 73 years old, and I'm still, you see what I'm doing. And I build houses, I do excavate, and I still have equipment. <laughs> And he, he said, I am truly, truly blessed. And I try to tell my people that all this poison we're putting in our system is not good for them. And it's going on a regular basis. See? So they don't know. I, I, I remember when my dad died at 56. I, I, why? Why? He worked yesterday. Why? I had a heart attack. That was it. No matter whether it's yesterday or today, you. You don't have the equipment and the facilities to do something or the knowledge. It's over. It's over. You know, some people say, well, Brother Johnson, you don't need to be working on them roofs. You don't need to be climbing on ladders. Well, if I don't, who? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I come off the roof and nobody's there, when? Mm -hmm. It's over. That's the way it is. That's life. You know, you're doing what you feel like you have to do. And, and I always say, slow foot is always around. You might blow you down with it. Get off this roof. How many have fallen off the roof? Nobody. Yeah. I come off backwards. Yeah. Backwards. I slid off backwards. You came up? Shut up, Way up there. Be far away to get to catch me. I didn't be part of my body. Look at that. <laughs> you, you went back, didn't you? You went back up. Right? Yes, I did different ways. God is so good. Amen. And you know, how many are familiar with that scripture in Revelation 13? Where it says, You live by the soul. Whatever your occupation is, you be a housewife. You're in a danger zone. That's true. You go back every day, right? You right. keep cooking, you keep ironing, you keep using chemicals. You keep doing it. And then somebody says, you, you shouldn't do that. What you going to do? What you going to do? You're going to live in a danger zone. You don't stop because Satan's in the garden. Hmm. Right? He's in the garden. You can't get around that. So you don't know how you're going to go out of here. And so if God asks you to do something, take your son, your only son, what do you do? Take a walk. Prayerfully, tearfully. <laughs> you don't know. So we're going to look at uh, the word structure. You need your notebook. I don't have any copies. We're going to look at the word structure. The Bible is a book of structure. We saw that in Eden, 
That was a home, your school, your church, your job, your government. We saw that that structure. Everything we need is structured. Now, when people get together and don't work together, then God is not in it. He is not in it. God is a structured God. You see that. So we want to be we want to be where God is in. Right? I thank you for HMEC for giving us this, this little place. And uh, <clears throat> we're not big, we're not strong. We want to have structure. Amen. And God will be with two or three. So definitions, here's a, here's a few definitions, and a few of them I'm going to touch on, but the others is for your information. <clears throat> it means the quality of being organized. And I used last week, I used a tree. A tree has roots, right? It has a trunk, it has branches, it has stems, it has fruit. It's organized. The tree does not by itself. In order for that tree to die, something has to penetrate one of those parts and penetrate it and cause it. I was sharing with Sister uh, Julianne this morning. Uh, Brother Clay, I don't know if he was there. I think he might have been involved with Sister Ann Mayfield. Septic. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. How did a, a, root, a tree root get in a septic tank? How does it get in? A tree root. In the concrete. And under the Wait, concrete. It didn't break. Oh. It's under the concrete. Oh, yes. the concrete top. How does the tree root get in the concrete? It's, uh, it searches for water oh. to stay alive. And by any means possible, it will get there. It just needs a crease. And it will go inside there about a quarter inch. And when it gets inside of that septic, it would be a root of a whole tree. It would be big like this, bigger than this, and different. Ball in there. And it will ball up. Ball up yes. in there. Yeah. To feed Such that tree. Such that it didn't go through the concrete. It didn't go it, through it the hole. Through the crack of the lid. The, the feeder roots. Yes, yes. Right. Right. Not the tap root, but the feeder roots is certainly for water. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, if it pours through the side, that means it, it, it has to. You know, the concrete wasn't good. So my point is that the tree, the tree itself, it, it does not fight itself. Amen. No part of the tree fights itself. Mm -hmm. It has to be a Satan stealing in through one of the parts. Mm -hmm. Just like the Spirit of Christ is saying, we should guard the avenues to the soul. Mm -hmm. right? What are the avenues? And so we see that in Eden, that he broke through the structure. See, when God made the earth, right? He made the earth and he put Eden in there, right? And so in order to get to man, he had to break through the structure. Every structure has an outer. Just like a cell is the smallest part of a human being, a cell, one cell, and it has a structure. And in order to get to that nucleus or that family that's going to reproduce this cell, he has to break in. Mm -hmm. He's going to penetrate it. Maybe it's a certain angle he can get in or whatever. He's coming. And so every family will be attacked by Satan by some outside forces. And if we're not on guard, we will come in. So the quality of being organized, Abraham had an organized situation. When Lot was taken, what did Abraham do? Call the army, the marines, the navy? No, he organized his family and went and got Lot. Some people don't see that. I have a statement I want I brought it last week, I didn't bring it this week, where some Adventists went down into South America where it was robbers, bad weather, and terrain was terrible, muddy, and
and they don't know how deep the mud was, and they didn't know if they would be attacked by indigenous people or rock. They were well off in the 1800s. You, you don't hear lessons like that. Mm -hmm. And they carried their message and got it through. And, but the mud was waist high. Mm -hmm. They didn't know if it would go deeper or not. But they were well on the right. So being organized for a particular purpose is necessary to get the job done. You have to have structure. Uh, Brother Courtney and Clay is. Structure is something like a building. A building is constructed depending on how high, how wide your foundation has to be secure to carry what's over. And so if it's not, Matthew 7 will take place. Mm -hmm. The wind will blow and the house will come down. Uh, uh, three, this is one I want to talk about. Something arranged in a definite pattern of organization. A definite pattern. Arranged in a definite pattern. That comes in the architecture. The architect is often because also the threat. Uh, number five. No, four. Manner of construction. The manner of construction. You know, like we had a guy in Huntington down there on, on uh, Buck Dick Road. He built a house, brick house, with all new material, by himself. Wouldn't take no help. He used no tools. But but the tools were working. He used no level and no <laughs> strength, and he built that house. The manner of construction. It was a community. I saw. I saw. <laughs> but it's still standing. No, it's gone. <laughs> we haven't got the property, property to it now. But it was like this. <laughs> well, <clears throat> number five. The arrangement of particles or parts in a substance. Oh, five. The arrangement of the particles or the parts in a substance. Or a body. All right? What if your eye was arranged down on your leg? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, so God well. didn't, he don't do that kind of work. <laughs> See, so uh, an organization of the parts is important. Amen. Put it in its proper place. Amen. Number six. An organization of the parts as dominated by the general character of the whole thing. Oh, I know who I know who you with. You know people down there on seventy by the battery. It's it's a character mm -hmm. thing that people see. Say you all do the same. None of you eat meat, right? And mm -hmm. there's a character thing. Yo, oh, and you don't do this, and you don't do that. That's organization. Uh, number seven. It's a coherent form of organization. Coherent. What does that say? What is coherent? If, if I spoke to you and if I said, come on, say, this, and me, I'm a Lord Johnson, you're going to say, well, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be understood. Yeah. Comparing it, I don't understand. All right. Uh, eight. The aggregate of elements of an entity in their relationships to each other. The aggregate, that word takes me to uh, uh, masonry type thoughts. Aggregate, right? You're talking about rocks, sand, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But this is, a, this is an aggregate of elements of an entity in their relationship to each other. With a little bit. What does that say? What all do we do? I remember uh, Solomon Whitman and I, <clears throat> we used to cut firewood. 
make money to sell. And we were delivering wood in a man's house one night. He said, oh, just put it in my garage. And we were stacking the wood out of our truck. We were stacking it in his garage. And when we got done, uh, he, he paid us. And he said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got it. Wait. I know this is not all you do. What else do you do? In other words, he saw an element of an entity in our relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. And he nailed it. He said, I want to know what else do you do? Mm -hmm. And we said, well, we teach Bible. And, and in particular, what? See, that's what this is saying. Define what else you do. Mm -hmm. And that's why this class, we're talking about classes next year. You know, besides the Bible, what else do you teach? See where it's going? In other words, Adam and Eve were gifted with more than one talent. Amen. So that's the definition. Now here's some synonyms just to help you end the name. Uh, form. Form. You know, you don't pull concrete right on the ground. You form. Form. That's structure. Construction. Formation, shape, composition, fabric. Mm. Now we're in the fabric. What's fabric? But how is fabric constructed? Anyone know? The what? Woven. Yeah, it's woven. What what does spirit of prophecy call that? Wolf and war. Wolf and war. In other words, it crisscrosses it. Cross that. And that strengthens the fabric. And you can see it, but you got to look close. All your clothing is your walk wolf. Right, Sister Burger? And if you're a seamstress. I use those words. We're hoping that you do a class. Amen. Uh, so, uh, arrange. What, what, what about red and blue and green? Is that arrangement? Is that proper construction? Yes. Oh, so, depends on what country you're from. <laughs> Remember a boat? What were the colors from Boat Nation? You know what I'm talking about? Hussein Boat? Oh, you were saying Hussein Boat? What were their colors? What's your colors over there? Green, green. Green, black, and yeah. See, it depends on your country. <coughs> and then you go to China, you get a different color. All right? Organize, order, design. That's structure. Assemble. Mm -hmm. See, that's something else needs to be taught. How to assemble. Uh, I heard somebody ask, well, would your wife teach a class on housekeeping? And construct. Okay, so those are synonyms. Now let's look at some scripture. And, and we're going to pick the temple up now a little bit right here. Genesis 1 26. <clears throat> and you got synonyms and you got definitions. Genesis 1 26. You can quote it right off. God said. <laughs> The God is a God of structure. So now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you were a God and you were making man, what would you start with? The structure or the function? Structure. Hmm? Well, what? Structure first. No, no, no. Anything you're doing, you have to first consider the function. What? What is it going to do? Structure needs function. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now, the two words then that we're looking at is anatomy, yeah. which is but, yeah, structure, mm -hmm. and physiology, which function. is function. Mm -hmm. So Brother Peter says physiology comes first, and Brother Courtney says anatomy comes first. Mm -hmm. Structure comes first, and then we give it to 
whoever to put it next That's right. Function. That's what architectural work is all about. <laughs> you might have to know what, you know, what, what, if something is going to do, then you build the, you build the building. <laughs> So, what comes first? The earth or the design for the earth? So, what's the design? Is it structure or is it function? Remember the definitions I gave you. Design is structure. Alright? So, Structure is organized by the mind, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now what comes first? The head moves. Like right? we got, we got a body. We got a head. Where the mind is housed. We have a heart. Where, where the feelings are housed, and we have a body where the movement is housed. So, what moves what the mind. to get the hand moved? The mind. Mm -hmm. And what moves the mind? The thoughts. Out of the heart are the issues of life. So, the feelings project the mind, move the mind, the mind chooses the facts, and then the hand carries out what the mind has decided. That's how we move and live and breathe. It comes from the heart. Jesus, if you love me, do what? So keeping his commandments come from what? The heart. The heart. Not just say, I'm going to keep it. If it ain't in the heart, it ain't in the mind. That's why anatomy and physiology need to be understood how we are made. It say, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So now you've got two people talking, at least two let us make or there's a decision made by their mind mm -hmm. to do something physical. And here we are. It's not a random process. Right? Alright, let's go to this one. Isaiah 43, 7. Let's go here. <clears throat> we'll come back to this what was meaning first. Isaiah 43 and 7. Everyone got it? Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. Mm -hmm. I have formed him, yea. I have made him. Okay. What did he create man for? For his glory. So he said he formed him. What did he form him with? Aggregate particles that work together. Right? So now, God made man and then he made him with a possibility to reproduce itself. How does that work? From your know. It takes two man and woman. Huh? <laughs> what did you say? It takes man and woman. He made man and woman to reproduce. All right. So how does that work? Where do the baby come from? Two embryos and coming together. They come together. Now, in a man, what's what's that reproductive fluid in the man called? It's sperm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what's it in a woman called? Where does the egg come from? Ovary. Ovary. All right. So now. When those two come together, then the reprodu reproduction starts <clears throat> real fast. Right? Mm -hmm. So 
in that process, only can a man or a woman be produced. That's how God made it. He made it with a function and a plan. His idea was to reproduce the earth. And, and, and what is the plan for reproduction of the earth? What's his plan to reproduce the earth for? Why do the earth? Why make the earth when you have other people, other beings? To replace a third of the angels. To do what? Replace the third of the angels that were left. Replace the fallen angels. That's a good one. So now, what kind of people would it take to replace fallen angels? Would you build your house with cotton from the cotton field? <laughs> Why insulation? <laughs> you might do the insulation part. <laughs> All right. So, so we're seeing then that when we study the Bible, it gets into our intimate mindset. What are you going to do after this relationship with this child or before this child? Is that called anatomy and physiology? Is that the subject? If we're still there, if scientists would say when God said, Adam, won't you go in the field and look at all those animals and tell me what you see? What would scientists call that? Zoology. But what's he going to see? Now it's just him. Right? No E. It's just him. What's he going to see when he studies these animals? Not a companion. They, I don't have a companion, but they do. Right. right? And so now his mind is going to have questions. But God foresees the questions. And what's God going to do? He's going to lay Adam down and he's going to make a match for him. He's going to do what? It's going to happen. So all our needs are met before we even dream we have a need. All of them are there. And a lot of people worry, I can't find a man. I can't find a woman. I can't go to school. I can't get an education. All your needs are met in, in the Word of God. Amen. 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 All of them. Sickness, everything is in there. The problem is, you ever heard of media blackout? Mm -hmm. A Bible blackout. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about classes that's going to unleash information that you probably never heard before. And even the presenter never heard before. But it's right there. So, structure is important. It is very important. Now, <clears throat> people have taken the word of God and reinterpreted it to me. Totally different ideas of what God intended for men. Totally different. Totally different. We need to find ourselves distancing those people. God said in Isaiah 43, and this is this is the brunt of the rebellion. He said, I formed them for myself. I didn't form them to get happy with their degenerate ideas. I formed them for, for, my, for me. Amen. These are my people. But we go to Ezekiel 5, we studied that this morning. Ezekiel 5, it, 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 it's illustrated. God told Ezekiel to illustrate this. My, illustrate the condition that exists between me and my people. I want you to illustrate it. Verse 1. Son of man, take thee a sharp knife. Take 
be a barber razor. I never had. Well, I can't say I did. They used to shake the back of our head with a razor. Boy, that thing, I was scared when he came. <laughs> oh, that thing was lightning sharp. And he done swatted on that leather, and that thing just looked like it's sparkling. And I said, don't cut my neck off. <laughs> That's how sharp a barber made uh, a razor. And cause it to pass on your head. Take all your hair off. And take your beard off. And wait. And divide. And this part, I want you to tell them this was going to happen. This part, that's going to happen. And this part, that part, show them what's going to happen with your hair that you took off your head. Can you imagine a lesson like that? I mean, I do illustrations, but I could never illustrate the doom of a whole nation. And we're talking about one spot on this earth. It's got to go. This is where I put my people between the Euphrates and Egypt, and they got to go. And this is the illustration, a raisin knife. All right? You read, you read down to verse 6. It says, no, verse 5. Thus said the Lord God, this is, when you see that word is, it is a geographic location. Bingo, bam. Right? This is Jerusalem. I have set it where? In the midst of the nations and countries that are around about her. Now, this is how I will this is the world. This is Jerusalem. I call this a human sin. And this is the outer crust. And this is Jerusalem. This is the, the nucleus. Somebody read uh, Isaiah, no, Deuteronomy 32 8. Deuteronomy 32 8. Let's get a picture of this, this razor. Shot. 32 8. Anybody? Let's see how God was so good to you. So merciful. He, he said, I made them for myself. He's talking about Israel. I made them for myself. Isaiah 43. And this is how they deal with me. They're not functioning like my people. What does it say? When the, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He set the bounds. In other words, Russia, America, England, uh, the Caribbean, all of that. Everything is set. Period. There are no more people on earth than this little dot can witness to. And we won't witness. We say, well, it's 8 billion people. The, that's, that's not many. Sound like a lot. But the church, if it was doing what God wanted to do, it would have done done its job. To spare room for more people. Why? Because the church will not do what God asks it to do. You don't know his, his purpose, his function. You were put here to take over what was. Taken down in heaven. But you don't realize your responsibility. Starting with that. Now look. It says, God said, I said it in the midst of the nations. She's the nucleus for, for sending, disseminating light and knowledge of the <coughs> truth God. And yet all we do is preach to the choir. Word of the people. Keep going. And she, that Jerusalem, has done what? 
change my judgments into wickedness more than the nation. Are we falling in the steps? If Brother Peter mentioned something this morning about a meeting this weekend, what was that meeting about? You oh, in Jerusalem, oh, in, in Sinai. Yeah. In Sinai, mm -hmm. these nations with their gods are going to come together in Sinai at the spot over here where Abraham worshipped That's right. God to kill his son. They're going to come together. All this paganism is going to come together in the name of God. Oh, yes. What kind of function is that? The, the razor is coming. <laughs> That's what's happening. The razor is coming. Man, don't get too close to my ear, man, with that thing. You know? He said, they should change my judgment. More than the nations, she changed my statutes more than the countries around her. What else? They have refused my judgments. We don't want God telling us what to do. All right. A.T. June, the Bible, the place of the Bible okay. in education. I think that's the book you have. <laughs> So I said, let me look it up, because I know I read it. I know I read it. So I said, let me look it up. And he's speaking, and he's going to deal with, he's dealing with the body, teaching anatomy. And he said, such a structure, as such a scheme, would lead the student to begin with the inventor's first conception of the machine about to be invented. That conception is always preceded by a recognition of a function to be performed. And the absence of any apparatus or organism to perform it. In other words, the universal law governing inventions require that the functions to be performed must first be recognized before the structure is devised. Yeah. That's where I was going. I didn't get I was going in back. <laughs> okay. But that's all right. Yeah. I mean, this is we we are in a classroom. Yes. And and we are the specimen in the classroom. Yes. Right? God made us and he's watching us yes. to see how we will perform. That's right. He goes on, let me say he said the history of every invention showed that it grew out of a recognized need of a machine to accomplish a given object. And that in its construction, each part was so devised. Amen. Amen. And, and it's teaching you, that particular chapter is teaching a medical person how to be a doctor. That's correct, brother. That's what that chapter That's what was. It, it was doing, yes. It's designed to teach you quickly how to practice your art. Mm. Quick. But it's even when Jesus and God considered creating man, they considered it. They, they thought of the whole plan. That, that's right. Amen. And because that's the only way you can do it. Before that's you right. put anything into place, it's just like a family. A husband and a wife is supposed to mm -hmm. consider what they're going to bring into the world, Amen. what the, the impact. That's right. The rules right. of the every right. of each individual. Right. And since you're cooperating with him in the di designing of your family. Yes. What it's going to look like when they get grown. I, I, you should have when I, this preacher said yesterday, when I build a house, I'm so familiar with it. I can, I can tell you before I finish what it's going to look like. He said, that's what I'm familiar with. He said, this hill you got here on this property, I know it needs a lot of dirt, but if you knew the principle that will govern that building you want to put here, he said, you don't need that dirt. Hmm. You don't need that dirt. I said, <clears throat> you got my interest. <laughs> <laughs> what about next spring? <laughs> <laughs> He said, call me. Gave me his phone. Save you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
and it will be right. He said, hey, don't come in the front where the driveway is, come in the side. Hmm. Now, I'm going to yield to the wisdom because even though my idea, what I want, is not what I want, what's right, it's what I want. Amen. I yield to what's right. If somebody come in here and say, well, I'll teach you sewing class. Do you have any leather working machines? I'll teach you leather too. Now you really get my interest. See? So I'm going to yield to, and I'm going to be the first to. See what I'm saying? A lot of times we so caught up with what I want mm -hmm. that you can't develop and grow like you should. Mm -hmm. That's it's healthy to get outside help if it's going to support the structure. We, we, we're proud people, and we need to overcome it. Everybody's proud. You know, and I'm going to show you in just a minute what that pride is going to end up, where you're going to end up with your pride. And we've got record. The Bible is a record of what happened when you reject his judgments, you reject his statutes, and you, you reject his word. You're going to end up, you think in heaven. But that's the way that seems like. Structure is important. Everything in nature has anatomy and physiology, and both are orderly and both under the laws of nature. Amen. The anatomy of an object is the structure and the physiology is function. In the case with man, a threefold being, right? It's unlike any other creature being on the earth. The mental and physical aspects of him are expressed in the physical aspect. See? We express ourselves with our hands, mm -hmm. our mouth, our feet. Mm -hmm. We express it the way we wear our clothes. Mm -hmm. But that's the way you wear our clothes with your mind, too. Mm -hmm. God is Man is God's masterpiece. Anything about him that does not exhibit God's purpose dishonors him. There's a lot of dishonor going on with this body. Mm -hmm. you know? And we've got to be humble. Except reproof, corrections, instructions, and righteousness. We've got to be humble. When one of these sides of man does not function properly. The other two sides follow suit. If your mind go off course, it will your body and your heart. If your heart go off course, that go your mind and your body. If your body goes off course, that go your mind and your heart. And so it, they have to be balanced. And this razor says, take a third here, take a third here, Take the third year. This is what's going to happen to Jerusalem. It's going to balance them out. You can be hard headed, but you're going to be put in the scales and weighed in the balance. Mm -hmm. It's simple as that. And let's read a little more of this Bible. <clears throat> they haven't walked in God's way. Therefore, because of the Lord said the Lord, because ye multiplied more than the nation that round about you. Now, Sister Pat, where, where do we read that at? In Exodus. You multiply more than the nation that rounds you. That's the, the women are alive. In other words, the Jews are outproducing the population. That's right. Mm -hmm. Adventists are outproducing about too many babies a month. Mm -hmm. Sins are being multiplied through the babies. Mm -hmm. We ain't got no control. It says, it says, and have not walked in my statutes, kept my judgment, done according to the judgment of the nation. You're not even doing what the nations are doing. You, you are excelling them. All right? Hey, again, therefore, because I am against thee. I'm against you. I'm your enemy now. 
and we'll execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the name. They're going to see what I do to you. And you're my people. That's strong. Mm -hmm. I will do in thee that which I have what? Not Whereunto I will not do any more than like the of all your abominations. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to judge you. I'm going to win you in the battle. Ten. Here's one. The fathers shall eat the sons. Mm -hmm. You ain't heard that one before. Right? You heard of the mama eating the children, but now it's saying the dad is going to eat the children. Mm -hmm. But what does the next one say? It says the children are going to eat the fathers. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. This is God. And the whole remnant of me, the whole remnant, instead of being located here, he's going to be all over the world. Just like that. It's going to be like little fruit flies. Can't tell when the next one comes. Everybody's going to hate you. Wherefore, as I live, said the Lord God, surely, with all thy detestable things, with all thine abomination. Therefore, will I also diminish thee and will shrink thee. Neither shall mine eyes fail, neither will I have any pity. Here, here we go. A third part, that's one part of three. A third part will die with pestilence, with famine. And a third part shall fall by the sword. And I will scatter a third part to all the winds and draw a sword out of them. They messed up the front of the Messed up. Geographically messed up. And God went through all that pain and suffering with them to get them there. And they never obeyed the one. Jeremiah 32, 23. Mm -hmm. This is this is terrible. And they're in captivity acting like they don't have no sin. They're down there mm -hmm. in Babylon. They're located a long way from home. They've been taken north. They don't even know the direction to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And they still act crazy. Mm -hmm. So what what does that leave God to do? He got the good suffering with the bad. God goes on. Mm -hmm. Mine anger be accomplished. It will be accomplished. I will cause my fury to rest on you. I'm not going to turn you loose when you cry for help. Put more on you. That's how wicked they have gotten. We know it's wicked. What about the wicked people that profess to be his people? You never read this about the world. He said, my fury is going to rest on you and I will be comforted. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I accomplish my fear on. Brother, we are under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. It's coming. It's always come that way. And you only have but two choices. You want to be blessed and you want to be cursed. It says, moreover, on top of all of that, I'll make you waste a reproach among the nations round about in the sight of all that pass by. And so it shall be a reproach and a taunt and destruction. I shall execute judgment and be in anger and in my fury and furious rebukes. And furious rebukes. And I shall send upon them the evil act. That's why we need to know, Lord, what will you have me to do? You, you, you don't have to go through this with the people. True. Get out of it. Break away and come out from among them and be suffering. Reckon 
had the problem that nobody wanted to do what God says and get out of that stuff and humble yourself. Something that calls 
blood to be in the tissue. When she recognized that she was talking with someone who knew the language mm -hmm. and understood it clearly, she said, I'll call the doctor. And when she called him, he said, no, 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 no contrast, no contrast. I said, give him an MRI then, but no, no contrast. That's right. They worship men. And this is what verse 21 is saying in Acts 12. But Brother Peter, it's worse when it comes amongst our babies. <laughs> Because we worship leaders. That's right. Look at Solomon. <laughs> you know, I was just reading, this is what I talk about object lesson, The Solomon is selecting him to book two. That his curse was not really, his problem wasn't so much the women. His problem was covetousness. Oh, yes. You know, and Solomon took, when he was going to build the temple, we talk about this temple he built, mm -hmm. but we don't talk about the apostasy <laughs> that he brought him with him. He took a, 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 a dominatrous man and put him over God's the creation, over of the God's of the temple. World. You that can't do that with God. Amen. Amen. We have to seek God. Just like when Joshua, after doing such a good work, when these men came in falsely, and his conscience is telling him, seek God, he Amen. thinks, this is something I can, I can sort it by myself. We are never to feel so self-assured. God must be consulted, even down to the minute things in our lives. That's what Jesus did. Amen. 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 That's right. Created you for me. Amen. That's right. We all doing other stuff. <laughs> so in in the book, uh, I don't have the reference, but you might look it up. Uh, Counselors to writers and it says this: We are not to put the face of any human being on our publications. Sure. No man goes on our publications. Not even our own picture. Not yeah. even our own picture. No, no picture of a man on mm -hmm. our publication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can look it up. I know it's there. <laughs> do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Every product we put out is to extol a human being. Mm -hmm. He's worthy of no praise. Mm -hmm. When Elisha sent the man home cured, right? Mm -hmm. How much did he get paid for curing that man? Zero. He said, take your money with you. That's Shut right. That See, we always want to lift man higher than he's created. That's not his function. I saw a hand move. Mm -hmm. okay. See, that's, a, that's where we at. We operate the heart and then coming up with protection that God takes you. And that's what you think your body is dealing with. You get to chapter 8, it's so bad mm -hmm. that all the members of the Sanhedrin are sun worshipers. Mm -hmm. The whole cabinet of the leadership is gone. Nobody to voice the sin. That's what the fornication of the church is. When we are going to the world, the world has become our standard. You know, who's consulting God? Who goes to God? And because you really you even listen among us. You don't hear, okay, sister or brother, go consult God. It's always like if a man has said this or whoever is okay. You know, we have to come up to a higher calling. If we're the ones to lead people and we're talking about we're coming to the end of time, why are we giving the world so much glory? It's sad. It's sad. I mean, that's what happened with the Antediluvians. They were giants in Italy and they worshiped them. We, we, uh, we read the Bible, and most times people will tell us about the minor prophets. Mm -hmm. But the minor prophets have declared straight judgment at all times. God sent them all the time. Telling you, short chapters. Definitely. We're on the foundation of the patriarchs, the prophets, and the apostles. If we get off that foundation, we're on the sinking sand. That's where we are. And, and, and like the brothers in South America, that mar was up to their chest. And they out giving messages. Hmm. Where's our zeal? They didn't, they didn't care about robbers or nothing. They said, well, let's arm ourselves and let's go. We went. And they were successful. Mm -hmm. They didn't shoot by 
they were defending themselves. I'm telling you, we, we got to get the spirit of the apostles and the prophets. Amen. Now, let's look at another person. We, got we, have, we have a few. We have a few. Read some more. I wasn't here. No, it said, and upon a day, I set the error arrayed in royal apparel, mm -hmm. and sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. Mm -hmm. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, mm -hmm. and not of a man. Mm -hmm. And immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. Mm -hmm. And he was eaten of worms, mm -hmm. and gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man. That's foolish to do that. You you get the man killed and you get yourself killed. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Now I'm glad you just said that. Because I know Brother Peter know um for the W. Mm -hmm. And that's something he begs the congregation, please do not exalt me because you're putting my life at risk. I do not want to leave my children before the father. I always remember him saying that. Like, mm -hmm. But we take pastors and then we exalt them. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that God is a jealous God. He mm -hmm. will not allow a man that should be leading people to him take the glory for themselves. Sooner or later, if you continue mm -hmm. that path, that mm -hmm. man will have to be removed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Daniel 429. Same thing. It happened before, and it's happening now. These are warnings. These are admonitions from God not to do these things. These are devils. Uh, Daniel 4, 29 through 31. The law of the Lord. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power? Not for the of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. That's our little kingdom. You know, we sing that song, uh, 383, for a closer walk with thee. Yeah. The Lord sit on my throne. He wouldn't let God on his throne. Yeah. And then read a couple more down there. It seems to make sense. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, mm. and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know mm -hmm. that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Mm -hmm. The same hour was <laughs> fulfilled when Nebuchadnezzar was driven by men to eat grass as oxen. His body was wet with the devil. Till his ears were grown like eagle's feather, mm -hmm. and his nails like bird's claws. Mm -hmm. Is that how? Mercy. Yes. <laughs> and, and Nebuchadnezzar went to his dying bed, praising the Lord. Of course. Amen. 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 He shook it off. Yes. It's not what I do, what we do, it's what God do with us. Yes. He designed us to work together mm -hmm. to accomplish some purpose in our life. And so the world will have a witness. Amen. Hey, I know those people. I know those people. You're all right. You can leave a million dollars laying around. They will not touch you. Mm -hmm. See, that's what God wants a representative people. Amen. And now, if we go to our grave like her, what can we expect? I know what the church did, and this, this lesson is for the church. What happened to Herod when he died? Did he go to heaven? 
That's what, that's what everybody say. Every funeral I've ever been to, he's in a better place. Yes, yes. Where is a better place than heaven? Come on, man. You don't read that nowhere. Nowhere in the anatomy or physiology of this book. Mm -hmm. But yet, we say it every funeral. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens to people when they die. Isaiah 38. Let's go there. Let's see what the prophet said. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Right? Mm -hmm. You believe what you want to believe, you shall not prosper. Believe his prophets. It says, grave, dead people in the grave mm -hmm. cannot what? Praise, Praise thee. Mm -hmm. Come on now. That's still as stolen men. Lifting them up. God said the dead know nothing. And yet you said they're in a better place. The dead can't praise. Come on. Oh, he's looking down. He's making sure everything work out in your life. I heard it just this week. Hmm. You know, they were walking through a cemetery had been buried for a hundred years. All these black men. Now they're in a better place. They're in a clean cemetery. Tell me, where in the word of God do you find such instruction? It says, death cannot do what? Praise. You can't praise heaven in the grave or Nebuchadnezzar. But yet you don't praise the dead. They that go down into the pit. What? Cannot hope. Cannot hope for that truth. It's over for them. They, the, the scales have been weighed on them. It's over. Next verse. The living, the living, the living, he shall praise thee, as, as I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. Thy truth, not my truth, his truth. God gets all praise. Mm -hmm. We done jumped the wagon, church folk. Mm -hmm. We got wrath hanging over us if we don't come into the knowledge of the truth and love it. Look what Ecclesiastes 9 says. Not 5 and 6, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand, what do the hand do? What the mind tells you. Whatsoever thy hand finds you do, do it with thy might, with all the muscle power you got. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom, where? In the grave, where did I go? Now tell me you ain't going in the grave. Mm -hmm. When you die, you go right up, right? You just right up. I ain't never heard mm -hmm. heard when you die, you go up. Mm -hmm. See, this is a church in darkness that teaches lies and yet claims God is the author. Mm -hmm. God didn't want to know no lie like that. We need to, it's time to call it out. Let's look at this. All the functions, the parts of a man, all the functions stop when he dies. There's no breath, there's no spirit, and there's no blood. He can't do anything. Right? Look what the scripture is. This corruptible, that's me and you, must put on incorruption. That has to be done first in the order that God designed it. You can't change the order. <laughs> he designed that you change from the corruptible to the incorruptible. If that's not done, it ain't going to be no wake up when Jesus comes. It, it can't be. So when, so that's a period of time, when this corruptible, when I I put on incorruption, and I have mortally have put on immortality. Then, when then shall be brought to pass that which is written, death is swallowed up in death. Not till then. Until then. We sing the song. Until then. Well, wake up to what it means. Until then. Then is what God does. Not what I do, it's what God does. When is what I do. Come on. 
I'm the one not to put on any corruption. God don't put on any corruption. He's incorruptible. He's mortal. Immortal. We're mortal. We don't got the wagon pulling the horse. Good question. That's just a little bit of a but um, I would encourage everyone to study. It's a physical science. Amen. In in the place of the Bible in education, it's beautifully yes. laid out. I could show you the cover, but it's mine. It's one of ours. I can't tell you what it looks like. It looks like it <laughs> but uh, study that book, <coughs> the place of the Bible in education by Alonzo Jones. And it will help you understand the place of the Bible in education. That's right. It has to be the primary subject. That's right. This That's has right. to be the subject. That's right. You need to know what happened in all these phases because we repeat them in our phases. That's what we are. It's structured for you to understand. You don't have to be in the dark. I don't know how to read my Bible. When you come to class, we're going to start real soon right here at HMEC. Amen. Amen. And we're going to have you Amen. teaching in a short while. Amen. You know, mm -hmm. If you love the Lord. Amen. Let us sing a song. Amen. Give me the Bible. Bye. 